Mayor. I'm pleased to be able to propose this motion on fracking and to seek Council's agreement to lobby against needless destruction to our environment. As a local councillor for Haxby and Wigginton in the north of the city, I know that the threat of fracking is a real and ever-growing concern for many local residents. Because the licences covering this part of York allow for exploratory drilling to take place from now. For York, fracking would lead to the industrialisation of our local environment and cause irreversible damage to the special character of our city. Globally, it damages both our environment and our climate too. UK fracking restarted only recently with Podrilla's three-month exploration process in Lancashire. Yet, tremors were almost immediately recorded at the frac site and the process had to be stopped. More than 100 development licences, which allow firms to pursue a range of oil and gas exploration activities in areas across the country, have been awarded by the Conservative Government. And despite the controversy, with their, the Government's current proposals to define fracking as permitted development and bypass the local decision-making process, fracking will be dramatically accelerated. Fracking isn't the solution to York's or to the UK's future energy problems. As the motion states, the potential for clean energy from renewables is vast, provided its development and uptake continues. According to a recent report from UN scientists, we need to invest nearly £2 trillion per annum in clean energy, up to 2035, to avoid catastrophic damage from climate change. Yet our government continues to push its money in the other direction, and its fracking proposals can only exacerbate that damage. I hope that everyone will agree with me then when I say that this is unacceptable. And I hope that the Conservative members here tonight will join in condemning the government's approach and actively lobbying against it. This motion also notes Council's support for the draft Minerals of Waste Plan, which is undergoing inspection law there. Should the government plough ahead with its proposals and impose fracking on our city, the Minerals and Waste Plan, if approved, would help protect residents and the local environment from fracking development. So I would urge members from all sides to support this motion so that, as a council, we can begin actively to lobby against the development of fracking in York and work to protect our local environment and our residents from this threat. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Cuthbertson. Is there a seconder for the motion? Councillor Cram? Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm happy to second this motion, and I would like to thank the Liberal Democrat Group for this cross-party initiative. It is clearly showing that we came a long way since 2011, when the Green Party was the only national party fully committed to oppose fracking in the UK. The motion is also mentioning the 500-metre buffer zone in the Joint Mineral and Waste Plan for North Yorkshire, and I want to publicly um, issue a well-deserved Thank you to Councillor Waller for his support he has thrown behind this proposal. I remember when I first brought up a buffer zone at a local plan working group, I was still rebuffed by officers that it would be legally impossible. Even if we're a bit short of the original one-mile proposal, together with all the residents who signed my petition, we managed to get an agreement on firstly 400 metre and later 500 metre. Without Councillor Waller keeping it in play and keeping an eye on the legal justifications at meetings that no Green Councillor could have reached yet, we would not have been so successful. Why is it important for the Council to lobby against our government's fracking proposals? The recent plans to change in national planning legislation clearly shows that this government is willing to ride rockshot over local residents and their representatives in the pursuit of environmentally destructive fracking. This is not the promised devolution of powers to the people, this is just anti-democratic. It is shameful enough that the government, in a bid to fast-track fracking, have already done this in places such Lanc as Lancashire, but now the government is making a total sham of any patterns of localism. The government's claim that there are potentially substantial benefits from the safe and sustainable exploration and development of our onshore shale gas resources needs challenging, and we might all have different reasons for this, like climate change, air quality, industrialization of the countryside, diversion of resources away from <coughs> renewables, etc., etc. 
Just last week, climate scientists from across the globe pleaded with world leaders to take unprecedented action to divest from fossil fuels and decarbonize their economies to avert the worst effects of climate breakdown that is already in process. Therefore, also councils must act because Britain under this government seconds, is a genuinely terrifying place. The ignorance of evidence and the pursuit of climate destructive policies that, um, at any cost imperils any future we hope for building for future generations. I would urge you to support this motion, not for the residents of the city centre because we don't expect uh, drilling next to the Minster Gardens, but for the residents in the villages in the Green Belt, because they are in the licensed area, they are going to face all the input there. So please support our people, our communities, and our countryside in the York Green Belt. Thank, Thank you, you. Councillor Cram. Notices have been received of one amendment to the motion from Councillor Stuart Barnes. I now invite Councillor Barnes to move his amendment. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, as Councillor Croshaw pointed out, the IPCC report recently warned that we have just 12 years to act in limiting catastrophic climate change. My daughter will turn 18 in 12 years' time, and it frightens me to think that her 18th birthday present might be the news that climate change is both catastrophic and now unavoidable. Fracking is a prospect that excites only the Conservatives in this country, but almost nobody else. Government indeed is so committed to extracting further fossil fuels that it's willing to ride roughshod over local decision making. The IPCC is clear that we've already identified far more fossil fuel reserves than the world could ever safely afford to extract and burn, and yet this Conservative government persists. The current motion put forward by the Lib Dems is, uh, is welcome in part, um, however like most of what the Lib Dems do, it's not much more than gesture politics. It asks us to lobby. Uh, but a not great deal more. So whilst I would agree that it would be great to lobby, uh, and we ought to do so, um, I don't agree uh, that we should stop there. I think we have far more powers at our disposal than perhaps they're willing to recognise. Um, all over the world, public and private sector bodies are rapidly committing to divestment from fossil fuels. They're committing to halt investments over a five-year period and divest from fossil fuel companies. Just as many consumer, consumers decided to use their consumer power to boycott the South African regime under apartheid in the 60s, 70s and 80s, so too many authorities all across the world are doing just that and divesting from fossil fuel companies. The list is very, very long. It includes Brighton and Hove Council, Cambridge City Council, City of Bristol Council, City of Oxford, Derby Council, Environment Agency, uh, Southwark and Haringey Pension Funds, Joseph Roundtree Charitable Trust, Kirklees Council, Sheffield City Council and South Yorkshire Pension Fund. Now I know that we're committed to the North Yorkshire Pension Fund and that arguments have been put forward previously to auditing governance and others that it would be too complex uh, to divest therefore. I refute this. Yes, it would be difficult, but no, it absolutely is not impossible as has been demonstrated by South Yorkshire Pension Funds. In terms of the impact it would likely have, on its own, probably not uh, significant enough to bring down the fossil fuel industry, but the North Yorkshire Pension Fund does hold 3.4 billion in investment assets. So, it wouldn't be easy, and we couldn't act unilaterally, but surely York should be demonstrating leadership across the North Yorkshire Pension Fund, of which, which it's a key constituent member, trying to drive North Yorkshire authorities to do what our counterparts in South Yorkshire have done and divesting from fossil fuels. And I hate to say this, um, however I will, because I do believe it's critical, if it's the issue of our days. Officers may put forward recommendations to audit and governance in response to this to say that it's difficult. Please do not let that mean that we stop at the first hurdle. Let's explore this to the nth degree. And I ask the Lib Dems, please, you are joint leaders of this council. So when this report comes, assuming we pass the motion tonight to call for work along this line, please give it your full political support, and with the full political support of the Labour Party, and I would assume the Green Party, we can make this happen, and we can demonstrate leadership across North Yorkshire and affect the change that could make the difference. If councils across the country, public sector bodies and private sector organisations took the same steps as I hope we will, we can affect that change. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Barnes. Is there a seconder for the amendment? 
Thank you, Councillor. Formally Lee. second and reserve the right. Thank you. We'll now move on to debates. Those who wish to speak to the amendment. Councillor Cram. Not trying to win a prize here with the most uh, speeches tonight, but um, I'm not speaking against um, the motion, um, uh, the amendment. It is just, I had a déjà vu when I was reading it, because one of my first council meetings, actually, here on the 8th of October 2015, um, this council um, carried a green amendment to Councillor Wallace's climate change um, motion, was, which was reading council resolves to require a report to audit and governance setting out the details of York's current direct and indirect investment in fossil fuels, including current investments by North Yorkshire Pension Fund, and giving a range of options for action on both direct and indirect investments, including an option to commit to no future investments and proposals for a process of total divestment and proposals to initiate similar discussions about their pension fund policies and strategies with the pension fund committee of the North Yorkshire Pension Fund. That has been carried by this House, and um, so I expect that we're carrying that amendment again. But luckily, we don't need all these reports again, because um, poor Debbie had a very hard time to prepare the first reports, which carried over months into audit and governance, and my proposal would be not to bring it to audit and governance again, and um, maybe Councillor Barnes, at that time Chair of Audit and Governance, will support me in that, that it was not the best um, uh, forum to debate this. I would um, suggest to, um, if that proposal needs to revisiting, to go directly to executive, the reports are ready, it is not something that we need here is another support of the council, what we need is the political courage of the executive not to bury that motion again. And um, before we have any further discussion, um, the audit and governance, 9th of February 2016, very nice um, webcast to watch, and um, also Councillor Stewart at his best executive at the 11th of February, where the executive was um, debating about the proposal. Please all read the report, please all watch the um, webcast, and if we then all feel um, willing, get something done on this. Uh, Councillor Doubt. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I have little doubt that there will be several views about fracking generally throughout this chamber, let alone in any one single group, as we've already heard. I have made my own personal views clear, as has Julian Sturdy in a letter, ward letter to our residents earlier in the summer. As a group, and united with our Conservative MP, I am proud to say York Conservatives absolutely do not support proposed changes to the planning process that would see an erosion of local decision making and changes that would allow permitted development. We can examine and play around with the words of the preamble in Councillor Cuthbert's motion as much as we want, but let's face it, one could be excused for thinking this motion is actually about Lib Dem political posturing for local elections in May rather than any serious influencing of possible but not fixed future national government policies. In actual fact, the timing of this Lib Dem motion and what they are asking Council to do is really quite tardy, much too late to have any real benefit to most residents as the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government consultation to permitted development rights proposals actually closes today. In the Conservative group in York, we don't shy away from questioning the government, whether it's blue or any other colour. <laughs> this is why we took a decision to send an official group response to the Ministry of Housing, Communities and Local Government consultation in the first half of September, which was sent with an accompanying letter by the Conservative leader of the Council. We hoped it would help have some impact coming from a Conservative group. In that response, we made our group view clear and quotations from it included statements to say we believe applying permitted development rights to large-scale processes such as fracking is wrong and that proposals were wholly inappropriate with the potential to irreparably damage residents' confidence in the, planning of our planning, in, in the fairness of our planning system. The timing of our consultation response with publication in a notification to local media was also aimed at highlighting the consult consultation to our city's residents so they have plenty of time to respond, should they have so wished. In presenting this motion to Council on the day of consultation closure, we feel the Lib Dems have somewhat missed the boat, save for the handful of people that might be watching the webcast this evening. Nevertheless, the Conservative group would have voted along with the initial unamended motion, and why wouldn't we? Because what the unamended motion is asking Council to do in the, is exactly what your Conservatives have already been doing, 
and we don't mind the Lib Dems catching up. We, with our consultation response, have already been lobbying the government and will conti continue to do so when appropriate. 30 seconds. We have Councilor no Jones. issue with Council contacting the Secretary of State or our city's MPs. In reality, the York Conservative out um, Outer MP is doing exactly, um, has already been doing this exactly. He has been speaking up for the city and Parliament. Um, he used this opportunity at Prime Minister's questions to raise local concerns about proposed changes to planning rules. And I'm delighted he's made a commitment to saying that he will always work to prevent drilling pro projects being imposed on our area against the wishes of local people. However, Labour's uh, amendment we can't, we can't run with. York is part of a much bigger pension fund, a multi-million pound fund. And when York, North Yorkshire uh, pen, pension fund has looked at it before, it is said all decisions will be on investment merit. The pension fund will merge into a Time, much bigger Councilor scheme, Doughty. and this is already happening. Thank you. Councillor Cusperson, you have a right of reply to the amendment whenever all the speakers are finished. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. It's, um, Sorry. You have a right of reply when all the speakers are finished. Sorry, I thought you were inviting me. <laughs> Councillor Richards. Thank you, Lord Mayor. My colleague, Councillor Dougherty, has already made a number of points about pensions, so I won't go there. However, our stance is and always has been to support our communities against any damage of whatsoever to its environment, tra transport sectors, whatever. That has always been the point from this group. Unfortunately, the Lib Dems have been going out recently claiming to be acting for, well, actually, I'm not quite sure, because I think Councillor Cuthbertson should actually explain why you have a national campaign group's literature within your literature. Is it your literature, or are you actually members of the national organisation and when you pull out documents in New Year's week where it said this is a yearly survey that then turned out to be a petition but it wasn't actually clear that it was a petition so I would like to know how you've actually managed to get your 2,000 plus people in your so-called petition because clearly there's an issue about how you actually collect information that's something that I expect well I will forward to from you and your group leader. However, fracking in its position, well, in its present state, as you claim it, isn't fracking, it's actually to do with gas. You would have known that if you'd have turned up to the meeting that happened in Haxby, where we had a professional turn up, which was the same chair that I believe was at your meeting when you went to Strensel, when you represented who? I wasn't quite sure whether you were representing the city of York or the Lib Dems, because when it turns out that same person would not accept the information put before him by an eminent engineer. So where are you getting your information from? Where is this video that you keep talking about by two people? Is that going to go to scrutiny so that we can all see what the actual facts are, so that the whole of this city can see what is, rather than it having, as the Labour members have said, Loads of spin. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Richard. Councillor Waters. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Mayor. I shan't be supporting this amendment for two reasons. North Yorkshire County Council Pension Fund trustees have a fiduciary duty to obtain the best returns for the members of the scheme. Those returns are secured from a multitude of investments, including managed funds that will have investments in companies like BP and Shell. Companies carrying out legal and indeed vital work. Companies that produce a regular and increasing dividend stream to support pension funds. Does Councillor Barnes really wish past and current City of York Council workers to endure cuts to their pension income to subsidise his virtue signalling with this nonsense amendment? The second reason I won't support his amendment is because it is purely based around the hysterical left-wing religion of climate change. <laughs> I aren't going to drone on about this, but will leave you with thoughts from Iva Jeeva, 
Norwegian physicist and Nobel Prize recipient in 1973. Obviously, more qualified than the laughing donkeys sat there. He often describes global warming as a pseudoscience and debunks with facts the hysteria behind global warming. Jeeva uses a very good analogy of a very real problem in New York City in 1900, namely the shortage of horses for transport and how to rid the streets of, we'll put it politely, the manure produced. Now, that was considered a real problem then. City leaders stressed over that then. We all laugh at such concerns now. Those that succeed us will laugh at us in 50 years' time for debating such nonsense as this tonight. Technology will make concerns over global energy production and use irrelevant in time. It will also make these arguments irrelevant in time. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Lucan. Thank you, Chair. Um, reserving the right to second this amendment. I second this amendment because it does, in, to quote um, the suffragette movement, it talks about deeds, not words. And sometimes when matters are urgent and extraordinarily urgent, then we have to look at deeds and not words. <coughs> it is very easy, as one or two people have already said, it is very easy to lobby and write letters and too often sometimes our motions to this council seem to consist of writing earnest letters which may or may not get read um, or lobbying people and we all do our petitions and we all do our various questionnaires but this is actually asking us to do something very real and perhaps difficult and perhaps it isn't easy but sometimes the very best things in life are not easy. You can't always expect to solve problems by taking the quick and easy way out. This is saying we will engage. It doesn't say that unilaterally, because unilaterally we haven't got the power particularly to um, single-handedly demolish the North Yorkshire Pension Fund, but it does ask us to use our influence, perhaps at a more local area, and we know actually how much the residents of North Yorkshire, not just York and the villages, how much the <coughs> residents of North Yorkshire oppose fracking. Mm. We have seen the numbers of people that are prepared to get out week after week in their local areas to oppose fracking. And the anger that was reached with the, within North Yorkshire County Council when fracking was allowed in some part of North Yorkshire. So we know the people of this city and of this county are with us, whether they come from a rural area or whether they come from the city centre. But this amendment is asking us to put our efforts into the lobbying, the negotiations, the discussions to actually achieve something very practical. And it is quite interesting that the, um, I think some of the fossil fuel companies like Shell, like BP, are waking up to the fact that there is going to be divestment, <coughs> that this is going to become much more of a problem, and they are going to have to address that fact. Um, so, quite frankly, I welcome the motion as a whole, but if we don't pass the amendment, then I'm afraid it is words rather than deeds. Yeah. Councillor Croce. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I think we've slightly got in a funny order here because I was expecting to speak before Janet. But I just wanted to make a very quick point, really, which... Sorry? <laughs> I just wanted to make a very quick point, really. Um, I thought that the whole kind of conservative ethos was about the power of the markets. And what we're asking you to do with this amendment is exercise that power. And what Councillor Doughty has said back to us is that actually you think that the profit that you make from the pension scheme negates what that pension scheme is investing in. And so you essentially what you're saying is that the profit is more important than the climate change that we're creating by investing in these companies. Thank you. Councillor Darvish. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm going to take Councillor Waters' challenge in Gauntland and carry on supporting this motion regardless. 
Um, I'm relieved that my colleagues on my left, on the right, um, have objected to central government. Um, I'm equally and massively relieved that we have this motion in front of us um, that with amendment gives us um, a means of raising our objection. I hope that other authorities throughout this country are doing the same against what is an insidious, insidious plan by this government to impose this destructive means that has no economic viability proven to it um, forward through evil means, offering money, cash incentives to landowners in Yorkshire to allow um, testing on their sites um, through to trying to bring this through into the NSIP when it doesn't qualify and justify its inclusion and finally th trying to thrust it through planning um, and take away localism as uh, colleagues have already mentioned and not allow authorities to make decisions on this critical matter. I'm deeply grateful that we've got this motion in front of us as amended and we will be supporting it wholeheartedly. Thank you. Councillor Cusperson, your right of reply. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, let me start by saying that we accept the principles behind this amendment as it's something with which we do agree. But it does make it difficult to accept when such astounding naivety comes from the proposal of the amendment and it overly simplifies what is actually a quite complex issue. And it really would help if Councillor Barnes got up to date on the subject. The pension fund that he speaks of doesn't directly invest in fossil fuel companies. It has an investment strategy and an investment target. And its duty is to actually maximise returns within the strategy that it makes. But its investments are made on its behalf by managers who are aiming for that certain level of return. And for the pension fund committee to actually interfere in the management, they might just as well do it itself. And, of course, that is not what they're there to do. Equally, the Council doesn't directly invest in companies or stocks. It is the Council's policy to invest in money market funds or directly with banks or building societies with the aim of making a short-term return that will bolster its, uh, its finances. But the Council does have minimal control over where those counterparties place their funds. I just want to say a word about the uh, pension fund. Councillor Barnes, with his intimate knowledge of the North Yorkshire Park Pension Fund, will know that seven years ago it was 71% funded. There was a 1.1 billion hole in its finances. In the last seven years, the strategy that it's, pro it's pro uh, followed with its managers, it's brought it up to being fully funded. Now, the question about where those investments are placed has, has uh, met its um, consideration. And I, I know that the council is, the, sorry, the committee is reviewing where its investments are placed. But that does depend on how the pooling arrangements, which the government has required it to partake in, actually operate and where the, the pooled funds are actually placed by the pool company itself. So it does begin to get very, very complicated. And it would have helped if Councillor Barnes recognises that his party could have made those very points over the four years that they were in the North Yorkshire Pension Fund Committee between 2011 and 2015. And for me to be greeted when I turned up at the committee with, oh, it's nice to see somebody from York here, it makes me wonder just how many times your party's representative did actually turn up in that period. But we do agree the ethical considerations should seconds, be made Councillor when discussing council investments. It's already been discussed as a result of a council motion earlier, and it went to ANG. And it was suggested that the implications of implementing an investment policy on these lines were to be explored by scrutiny. But that hasn't been taken forward. But with that in mind, we would accept the amendment. We would accept that work should be undertaken as to how to take it forward so we can incorporate those ethical dimensions into council investments and to, and to our approach with the North Yorkshire Pension Fund, of which we are but a small part. Thank you, Councillor Cuspertson. I'll now take a vote on the amendment. All those wish, wishing to vote for the amendment, please raise your hands now. Thank you. All those against 
the amendment. The amendment is clearly carried. Now open debate on the amended motion. Anybody wish to speak on the amended motion? Councillor Waller. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I am grateful for the comments from Councillor Cram. We're not through the woods there, um, but I'm hopeful that the inspection process will result in um, the first uh, buffer zone in, in the country. But primarily, I speak as a physicist. It has taken 30 years of very careful research and ensuring the statistical evidence was scrutinized. When in the ancient past I did study atmospheric physics, it was at a time when um, lecturers um, said that it was suggested, but they would not at that time be categoric. Time has moved on, and they are certainly very much, on the whole, convinced that um, climate change is happening, and as the IPCC report indicates, that the time with which we have the opportunity to influence um, carbon dioxide emissions is rapidly running out. So therefore, I very much hope that you will support the motion. Thank you, Councillor Waller. Any other speakers? Councillor Taylor. Dave Taylor. Yeah. I'm pleased that we have this motion before us tonight, and I'm pleased that I think it's going to go through um, almost unanimously, probably one, uh, one uh, vote against over there. Um, I just wonder where you all were when the Green Party a few years ago um, proposed a moratorium on fracking in um, North Yorkshire as part of the Waste and Minerals Plan. Did we have to wait until there was a threat of fracking to our own constituencies here in York? I just want to read you the little bit of Lars's speech that he didn't go around to reading, um, in which he says, the government is planning to use secondary legislation to get the proposed um, uh, planning changes through. And although it's too late to add this to the motion, um, he says, as well as asking Rachel Maskell and Julian Sturdy to object, I would also ask them to call for a parliamentary vote on the proposed changes. Otherwise, this means MPs will not get a vote as the government wants to stop all local councillors having a vote on developments. It's a double whammy for democracy. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I uh, voted against Councillor Barnes' amendment, although it's, uh, it's always quite amusing to see him grandstanding and looking to his friends for support. Um, I think Councillor Doughty has already pointed out uh, a view that I concur with, and that is that we shouldn't be stopping pension funds from uh, gaining investment um, or gaining uh, returns on their investment. Now, the, our view and the City Council's view expressed to the government is that fracking should not become permitted development. This should be kept within the um, effectively within the control of the local authority it shouldn't be taken out of our hands whatever the uh, pros and cons of fracking are and the jury's still out on that um, I think you should look at other things instead we've already closed two big power stations around here I see there are now plans to uh, construct a gas fired power station at Egborough because if we close all the power stations that we have, uh, what happens on a cold night in winter when we need electricity, the wind farms aren't working because there's no wind, the solar panels are no use because there's no sunlight, 
Oh yes, we have a lot of diesel generators on Gascoigne Wood. Whose idea was that? Ridiculous. I think the far better idea is to use British technology, proven British technology, and use small modular nuclear power plants, <coughs> the ones that propel nuclear submarines. British technology, Rolls-Royce, British built, and it's safe. Uh, I think that's all I need to say, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dew. Councillor Waters. Thank you again, Lord Mayor. <coughs> I've been expecting some way of the coalition partners separating themselves in the eyes of voters before next May's local elections. But never did I expect the Lib Dems to come up with such new relevance to make the break before the election. Those of you that are members of the hysterical climate change mob might not like your new religion being dismissed as an irrelevance. But in York, it certainly is. The planning department has confirmed to me that there have been no pre-application inquiries for hydrocarbon testing or production, and no formal applications for the same in the City of York Council area. So why is this virtue of signalling motion wasting this Council's time in debate? I'll tell you why. Partly it's because a number of members are part of the unthinking, hysterical mob that worship at the altar of carbon reduction without giving any sensible thought to how the nation's energy security is met. But mainly, this has been debated because scaring people over the fracking issue is thought to be a Lib Dem vote winner. We might as well be frightening the public over the equally remote possibility of York having a nuclear power plant dumped here. What is being debated tonight is nonsense. It's deflecting real local concerns on real issues the Coalition has failed on. Real environmental issues. Recycling in York continues to be an inefficient farce. No initiative shown by any of the executive. For example, look at Leeds Council. Car park charges are offset by depositing plastic bottles when you go in. Why aren't we showing a similar initiative? If I hadn't constantly been banging on about the use of solar roof tiles and getting that use included in the New York Central Design Guide, would that have been achieved? I think not. Too many members stressing over non-existent fracking problems. The Coalition's record with environmental management of parks, open spaces, and especially grass verges, is appalling. No interest or competence shown with environmentally friendly verge management, for example. What's this administration's record on increased tree planting and protection of existing tree cover in the city? As bad as the last bunch. 30 seconds, Councillor Waters. If it hadn't been for me dragging the Clifton Moor tree massacre in front of planning committee with the attendant publicity, how much worse would that have been? So don't use an entirely hypothetical situation for York to mask your own abject failure to run an environmentally responsible administration at local level. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Richards. <coughs> Thank you, Lord Mayor. Pardon my back for giving us some. <coughs> um, just to clarify something, Julian Sturdy recently stated at a meeting of the parish councils that he is against the government's <coughs> proposal. That's against. His point is that he requires to maintain as much democracy as possible which is where it's strange in some people around there who don't seem to want to do that. Regarding temperatures, I, I, I mean, it was interesting to see our friend Councillor Waller stated about his past. Maybe he could have told us also that the fact is that at this moment in time, the temperature in this world is going up naturally. Nothing to do with carbon emissions. It goes up and then it goes down. And if you, if you wish to go and see a number of eminent doctors who have been to the university and have spoken on this subject, please go. Councillor Bounds, you should know about this if you are in the industry. And lastly, China. What on earth are you going to do about China? China is the biggest user of coal. I've heard nothing about how you're going to mitigate that carbon going up and we're going to suddenly make it suddenly go down here and we're going to balance it out. I mean, are we bigger than China? I don't think so. I mean, maybe your map has grown a bit, but ultimately, 
There are a number of things that are out of our hands. It's about time you started realising that that is the fact and coming up with some ideas about that rather than trying to say it's our government that's at fault and we aren't doing enough about it, etc, etc. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Richardson. Councillor Stuart Brown. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I've been called all sorts, every name under the sun tonight. I'm naive, I'm a donkey, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. Listen, at the end of the day, I'm quite happy to take the offence. If through my naivety uh, I ask the difficult questions uh, that none others are willing to take on, then, then so be it. Um, I, Councillor Richardson points out I, I do uh, work in renewables and I can offer him a crumb of comfort vis-a-vis -vis China, uh, who by the end of 2024 will have installed 16 gigawatts of offshore wind, which is more than this country currently has. By 2030, they'll have 100 gigawatts. So, don't worry about China, they're doing their bit, slowly but surely, and uh, bear in mind they've got a long way to go before they match our emissions over the past 250 years. Um, I think it's quite embarrassing, frankly, for the city of York, I, I dare say, um, that we've got so many representatives who are clearly climate change deniers. It's, that, that in itself is, is shocking. Um, so we've got the Tories who are kind of climate change deniers in part and uh, happy to object to localism, uh, being eroded, but not to object to fracking. We've got the Lib Dems, who uh, I'm not quite sure where they stand. Uh, they've kind of reverberated my amendment uh, and then voted for it. Um, and I'm naive for wanting to effect a change, but they're happy to go so far down the line because it would be politically expedient and allow them to kick a report into the long grass until after the election. Um, so basically, words, not deeds, as, uh, as Councillor Lucker has expressed. Uh, believe me, we will hold your feet to the fire. If you think this is another report that will go to ANG and you'll go out and do your leaflets across your counter, then good luck to you, but I don't think the people of York are stupid and they'll very quickly suss out your position, which is frankly no better than the Tories who you'll be fighting for your counter seats with. Only York Labour and admittedly York Greens are willing to actually put their money where their mouth is. And what this reminds me of, I think I said it at the last debate on the subject, is the abolition movement. It's a complete disgrace. On the one hand, you acknowledge that climate change, man-made climate change, is the biggest threat to humankind. And on the other hand, you're telling me that because of the threat to returns on the pension fund investment, it can't be done. It's absolute insanity, yes. hypocrisy, immoral. ridiculous, immoral. Um, I, well, I was listening, I was listening. Maybe it's my naivety. Um, so all I would say is, please, don't use this as a, a political ploy to kind of get your leaflets out and kick it into the long grass until after the election. Please act on it. Thank you. Councillor De Gaulle. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, a number of, of, of points have been raised about um, the energy choices that we face. Uh, this government has uh, undermined all attempts to try and promote renewables. It has uh, removed all, a lot of the subsidies that existed for uh, solar. It, it has uh, made it very difficult for us to have uh, onshore wind. Um, and we also had the farce of the, the Green Deal, which was going to provide everyone with uh, better insulation so they could reduce the heat loss and the expense they were giving over to the energy companies. Of course, that was a complete flop. And now we have uh, still many thousands, perhaps millions of households, which still don't meet the standards of new buildings, which are not going to be insulated because we don't have the funding. But we've got plenty of money to give to the oil and gas industry to support them in make sure that they have the opportunity to extract gas, um, which they... Uh, are trying to do um, and have started in Lancashire. We've seen the experience of what's happened there. After uh, seven, seven years, they've started again, and all of a sudden there's earthquakes again. We know what, what the consequences can be um, of, of fracking. We've seen the sort of scale of uh, what even exploration means at Kirby Misperton. If any of you have not been to Kirby Misperton and, uh, during the, the, the op, op operation there, you will uh, not be aware of the, the fact that there's a massive lorries going for a small village, there was um, a large-scale operation taking place there, uh, far in excess of the normal traffic, just from one plant, and where the fracking operation, if it gets going in this country, you only need to look at the experience in the States. But having said that, even if you accept that we might want might useful 
usually see this uh, gas as a, a bridge fuel or what you want to call it. The people who are applying for it, one of them, is a company called INEOS. What do they do? They make plastic, single-use plastic, which is the last thing which you actually want. We are actually talking now about a European ban on single-use plastics. So what is the point in us actually developing new, uh, new facilities seconds, to extract this gas? Uh, it's not going to meet our energy needs, and it's actually dam damaging our prospects of tackling climate change and our environment in the immediate neighbourhood. Councillor Cuspertson, do you wish to reply? Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll reply briefly. Um, I wish that this issue hadn't been made into a political football by... Um, no, no, no. Oh. I don't think so. I think the issue is there in the motion. Um, but what I'm, what I'm surprised at is that um, when the Labour amendment was, um, was moved, um, the next three speakers, the first one talked about political posturing and did nothing else. The next two, one of them talked about manure and they produced nothing else. So it's been a very interesting kind of evening. But I would say quite clearly in this council there is, a, there is a wish to uh, act against fracking. There's a wish to look for environmentally responsible investment. Um, and uh, despite the fact that uh, membership of the North Yorkshire Pension Fund Committee um, is, is but a small, uh, we just have a, a very small part of it, and it may be impossible to um, influence other members, I certainly think that the matter should be raised with them. Uh, in terms of uh, altering the uh, places in which the council invests uh, for its uh, short-term um, interest-bearing deposits. Um, it may be impossible to get um, the, the necessary returns from anything other than the big five or so um, institutions that are currently used. But again, that could be looked at. But I don't pretend that that problem is easy to solve, but I do think that this should result in um, at least an, um, some lobbying, at least uh, a firm position, uh, at least um, action by our two MPs to pray against the placing of a statutory instrument on the table of the House, which is what will happen in due course if the government has its way. Uh, and I also think that we should start establish an ethical uh, investment policy. Um, Although, as I said, I'm not clear to what, to what extent we can effect that. So um, I would urge members across the room to support this motion and to do something worthwhile against fracking in York. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Cuthbertson. I'll now take a vote on the amended motion. All those in favour of the amended motion? All those against? Abstentions? The motion is carried, thank you. The amended motion is carried, sorry. Move on to the final notice of motion. Boosting the supply of homes people can afford.